We're now going to look at an example of calculating the arc length for a portion of the path that is traced out by the given vector function. First of all, let's graph this vector function, and hopefully by now we're starting to recognize this vector function is one that traces out a helix. So let's plot a couple of points to determine the orientation of this curve. We're looking to find the arc length from 0 to pi over 2, so let's start with the value of the parameter is equal to 0. So plugging 0 in for t, let me show a quick unit circle here. When the value of t is equal to 0, the cosine of 0 is 1, so the x component is going to be 1. The sine of 0 is 0, so the y component is going to be 0, and then we have 0 in for t, which is going to give me a z component of 0 as well. And when t is equal to pi over 2, we're going to have the cosine of pi over 2, which is 0. The sine of pi over 2 is 1. And then pi over 2 in for the value of the parameter is just going to be pi over 2. So these two vector outputs should be enough to give me the idea of what the helix is going to look like. Let's assume that the scale of this graph is 1 half so that our graph is a little bit bigger. This would be the output r at 0, which is a position vector terminating at 1, 0, 0. And the vector output when the parameter is pi over 2 is going to be 0, 1, and then pi over 2. So we have an output vector that is terminating at this ordered triple. So our helix is going to start here and then move in this direction around the z-axis. And the length of the curve that we're after starts at 1, 0, 0, and finishes at 0, 1, pi over 2. And this is the length of the curve that we're after. We'll call it L. As a reminder, our arc length formula is the integral from alpha to beta of the magnitude of the derivative vector function integrated with respect to the parameter. So let's determine what the derivative vector function is. So we're going to take the derivative of each of the individual components. The derivative of cosine is minus sine. The derivative of sine is cosine. And the derivative of t is just going to be 1. Then, to determine the magnitude of that derivative function, we need to square the individual components, add them together, and then take the square root. So that's going to be sine squared t plus cos squared t plus 1, which is going to give me 1 plus 1, which is the square root of 2. So the arc length is going to be determined by the initial value of the parameter was 0, the terminal value of the parameter was pi over 2, the magnitude of this derivative vector turned out to just be square root of 2, and then we integrate with respect to t. So the arc length is going to be square root of 2 times t, and then we're going to apply the limits of integration to get square root 2 times the upper limit, which is pi over 2, minus square root 2 times the lower limit, which is 0. And of course, this is just 0, so we end up with the square root of 2 times pi over 2, which reduces, if we were to consider 2 to be rad 2 times rad 2, we could cancel one of these factors of rad 2 and simplify this down to being pi over rad 2. So the arc length for this section of our helix turns out to be pi over rad 2 units.